So we can now start populating the disk with some data, download some packages, and then eventually start building. So here we are on chapter three now, packages and packages, or packages and patches rather. And it explains some things there about what, what's going to be done, how it's going to be done. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a directory where all the packages that we download are going to reside. So once again, if you've had a little break, just check that the LFS uh, environment variable exists <clears throat> and it does so we can run this command successfully we know that we're not going to create if if for example the LFS directory didn't uh, sorry the LFS environment variable didn't exist what this would do create a sources directory on the root system of the live CD and that would be absolutely pointless because when we go into the Linux from scratch environment that that directory wouldn't exist so that's an example of why it's so important to ensure the LFS environment variable is uh, set somewhere sane. So let's press enter. It's created that directory. And then what we're going to do next is to change one of the flags of the permissions of that directory. And it makes it sticky. And as it says there, it means that only the owner of the file can delete that file within a sticky directory. So because we're root, it means that only at the moment, only root would be able to delete that directory. Uh, but I believe what we're going to do is we're going to change the ownership of these files that we're going to put in here to another user. So it would mean that only the that LFS, or yeah, it will be an LFS user, will be able to, to delete the file. So it offers some sort of protection to prevent uh, any other user deleting the directory in case that, that could be an issue. So what I'm going to do now, um, this is quite a, a good idea to do, is to just go into that sources directory, um, just in case I do anything that I want to keep within the Linux from scratch system, I can leave it in the sources directory. The commands here will actually, um, that we're going to run here, download the packages, they will actually put them in the sources directory irrespective of what like, the current directory is, but uh, I'd just like to be there uh, just in case, like I say, I want to put anything else in there, which I'm going to do actually because we're going to get the, the way this works is they use wget to download the packages and wget is driven by a steering file which is accessed by this link here. So if I do copy link and I can use wget to fetch that and while I'm at it I'll get this file here which is a, a uh, another file which has all the MD5 checksums. So I'll paste that in as well. And wget will fetch these two files and you can see why I moved to the sources directory now because those... Oh, okay. Did I... Yeah, okay, so the, I didn't copy, what's happened there is that I didn't copy the link correctly and I've pasted the same link twice, so it's downloaded the same file twice. <coughs> so what I'm gonna do, <coughs> excuse me. Right, so what I'm going to do... <coughs> right, sorry, another coughing fit. What I'm going to do is to remove that file which is not needed. And try and download the correct file, this MD5 sums. 
copy link yeah that's right okay so now you can see I've got these two files I've got the wget list which is the list of packages and the md5 sums which is a list of checksums for those packages and what we're going to do is run this command to fetch the packages automatically so if I once again just echo the LFS variable to make sure it's there because we're going to be using that variable and copy and paste this command and what this command will do is it will fetch using fetching it's going to fetch all, of, all the files that are specified in this input file which is the wgetlist.sysv in fact let's have a look at these two before we do anything that'll make a bit more sense so this is the uh, first file that I downloaded you can see it's just got it's just a list of URLs but you can see why I call it a steering file because it guides wget into what to download <clears throat> And likewise, if we look at the MD5 sums, again, that's a list of just the package names, but with a list of signatures, MD5 signatures for each of those um, packages. So let's start wget and wait for this to finish downloading. So this will take a couple of minutes and we'll come back when that's done. Okay, so that has 
finished downloading. Uh, so there's two things we need to do here which can be achieved by the next uh, commands or few commands. And that's one to identify which packages haven't downloaded. Sometimes packages get updated, the links break and so on. And secondly, once we've ascertained that, well, part of the same thing actually, um, the other thing is to ensure that the packages were downloaded matches the signatures. So th this is actually achieved by running this command here. If there's any packages missing, they'll be identified. And if any of the packages that have downloaded, sorry, I should be doing this one at a time, shouldn't I? If any of the packages have been downloaded, that have been corrupted or have changed in some way, then again, the signatures will identify that. So first of all, we'll just push the directory to the sources where we're there anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And then we run md5sum using the md5sums uh, file to use those signatures to compare with what md5sum calculates. Now this is an example where I said it's easy to make a mistake. I've just highlighted this command, but I've missed the S out. So if I was to run this, it obviously wouldn't work because there's no such file as md5sum. It's got an S on the end, so I need to put the S on the end. So that's where it's important to be careful how and what you're highlighting. Just double check. So that's run. Uh, let's just do the last command, pop D, to empty the stack, return us where we were, which obviously is incidentally is the same place. Uh, just need to scroll back, just check that all the lines say OK. It should be OK because generally you'll see a big message sticking out saying, you know, what the problem was couldn't be found or there's a signature mismatch. So you can end at the end there. I think it says also that the errors are found or something. But yeah, you can see that we've downloaded successfully all the packages and uh, all the um, checksums match for all the signatures that we've got. So that's all good. We're ready to go now. Uh, the next couple of pages have got information about all the packages. So if you do have a problem, this is where to go to try and get the correct package. Uh, it's got the home page and the actual direct download link that was used in the wget. If you still can't get hold of it, there are several mirrors of Linux on Scratch, and I think one of them is the uh, Oregon State... University, I think it is, uh, which is, I find, a good one to use. Uh, FTP. Yeah, this is the link here, ftp.osuosl.org forward slash pub. Let's see if we put in LFS, it might give us a link directly to it. Yes, it does. There you go, the first one. Uh, LFS packages and there you go there's even older versions there if you're interested in that and there's 11.2 it's already been mirrored uh, half past six yesterday evening with the looks of it assuming that's uh, uh, might be local time maybe I don't know uh, but yeah so there's a list of all the packages so you can come here to fetch a package if you find that one doesn't download for some reason I'm not sure what that check.sh is Just have a quick look at that out of interest. Uh, so it looks like it might be something to do with the actual mirroring, possibly. Uh, certainly not needed for Linux from scratch. I don't don't recognise that unless we come across it later. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, the important thing is if if one of these fails, you can fetch it. And this is not the only mirror. There are other mirrors. Uh, but obviously, you'd have to find them. But like I said, I found this is a uh, quite a good uh, and reliable website to use. 
Uh, another thing I should mention is on these pages, when we come to do the actual compiling, don't just uh, click on the next at the top of the page. Scroll all the way down. It's quite easy to um, miss commands or miss some important information because you haven't read to the bottom of the page. You think you've finished the installation of the package, you tidy up and just click next at the top when in fact there's further information that's either important to the install or um, uh, you know maybe another command that's optional. So it's always best to scroll right down to the bottom of the page and cl click the next at the bottom of the page to ensure that you've, you've actually eyeballed everything that is on, on that particular page. Sorry, so yeah, I'm just skipping through here without saying. This next page after the packages is a list of all the patches and again, direct links to those patches. They should have been downloaded as part of the wget list, which yes, indeed they have. There's the call utils one there. And uh, where is it here? There it is there. So that's that one there that's been downloaded and, and it's a pro associated checksum.